Hey guys, Forrest here with Fofo Astro, and today we are going to do the, I think it's the fourth video in our mini observatory build guide series. So like we talked about in the last video, this video is going to be mostly directed toward the pier and the important things that we need to think about with the pier. So as of right now in the stage of the construction, the foundation of the pier has been poured. So we've poured concrete into the hole and we've got rebar sticking up that we are now going to build the actual above ground section of the pier onto. The reason that I wanted to make a special video is because one, I was waiting for some supplies to arrive, but two, there are two very important considerations in this part of the construction process that we need to address. Consideration number one is how do we actually in the long term get the telescope to attach to the top of the pier? Obviously, piers are made of concrete, at least this one is, to do a budget observatory. Your pier is going to be made out of concrete. You're not going to be able to afford, you know, $700 for a steel pier. So how do we get a concrete top to connect to a telescope? That's one of the concerns. The other concern is the height of the pier. If you pour your pier too tall, your telescope's not going to be able to fit under your roof. And if you pour it too low, then the roof is going to be too, the walls are going to be so high that it blocks a lot of your view of the sky. So I want to talk about both of those today and how we can get around them and how we can find solutions. The first one that I want to talk about, which is why I'm in the shop, is how do we connect the telescope to the top of the pier? And the easiest way that I've found to do this is, well, actually the only way, is to use what's called a pier top plate. Now, I first of all want to endorse a company called Dan's Pier Top Plates. There's this guy named Dan. He makes plates that are for the purpose of connecting your telescope or your mount to the top of a concrete pier. And he sells kits that include J-bolts and, and big machined pieces of aluminum. They're beautiful. I have one on my main observatory and it is absolutely hands down a beautiful piece of machinery. So I'm gonna leave a link to Dan's Pier Top Plates down in the video description. If you're building a nice high-end observatory, that is the thing to go with. It's very thickly machined, beautiful steel. It's just, it's nice. He does it aluminum. He does a really, really nice job. So definitely check that out. The problem is the cost of Dan's Pier Top Plates, while it makes sense for my main observatory, does not make sense for this budget build because I would literally end up spending twice as much as I do on the entire observatory on just a Pier Top Plate. So what I opted for was to machine my own. Now I want to be very clear, I am not a machinist. I have very minimal metalworking tools. In fact, really all I have is a drill, some bits and uh, a grinder and some really simple stuff. So I wanted to do this in a way that pretty much anyone could do it and it's still affordable. So what I did was I actually picked up a few pieces of quarter inch hot rolled steel. So this is just quarter inch steel and this piece is cut to six by six inches. I ordered this on eBay and I actually got four pieces of steel this size for $24. So they only sold them in four packs, but that included shipping. So uh, what is that, six bucks a piece? And I figure if I ever change my telescope out, I've already got another piece of steel to make a fresh pier top plate with. So that's gonna be super awesome. Now, what does this plate do? Well, this plate is going to convert the mount that mounts into the concrete to something that can attach to our telescope. So what you're gonna wanna do first is look at the bottom of your telescope or your mount. Sorry, I keep saying telescope. Look at the bottom of your mount and identify what the mounting system is. For mine, I'm building this first off for my Fornax mount. And my Fornax mount uses a three quarter inch standard tripod thread in order to mount. If you have a Sky Guider or a Sky Tracker or something like that, or a, um, a Sky Watcher Star Adventurer Pro, anything like that, those all use that standard three eighths inch tripod mounting system that, that's pretty universal. So what I'm gonna do with this plate is I'm gonna drill a hole through the center of it and I'm gonna run a 3 8 inch uh, bolt through the bottom of it with a couple washers, and it's simply gonna bolt right up through this plate into the bottom of my Fornax. So my Fornax will sit nicely on this, on this plate right here, and it'll be bolted up through the bottom. Super easy, it's gonna just sit there, it'll be great. Now, how do we get this into the concrete? Well, the way we get this into the concrete is I'm gonna drill four more holes around the outside of this plate, and I'm gonna run threaded rod through each of those four holes, and I'm gonna bend that threaded rod. I'll show you guys some video when we get into the construction, but I'm gonna bend that threaded rod and sink it into the top of the concrete. So the concrete's gonna harden, it's gonna hold on to that threaded rod, and it's basically gonna hold this pier top plate up above the top of my pier by a couple inches. So I have some room to work with the, uh, the bolt that bolts onto the mount. And so that's all it's doing. It's converting a way for us to mount into the concrete to a way that we can mount onto our mount. So this is the first 
kind of side of things. What I'm going to do is cut to some time lapse footage of me machining, machining, I use that in quotes, machinists, I am sorry, you are going to be so sad with what you see today. Shield your eyes, it's not going to be pretty. I'm going to sketch machine this, sketchy drill this thing, not machining it, I'm going to drill it. And I'm gonna to cut to some time-lapse footage so you guys can see it. We're gonna look at kind of the finished product before we do the construction. And then we're gonna talk about part number two, which is how do we figure out how tall we want the pier to be. So let's look at some time-lapse footage and then I'll catch you guys on the flip side. All right, so here we can see marking out the positions of the holes as well as uh, adding a little bit of a divot for the drill bit to find center. Adjusting the drill, the drill press to the right size. You could totally do this with a, uh, a standard hand drill as well. It's just going to be harder to keep everything centered and, and put down that force. Um, you want to use some sort of cutting oil as you do this. You can see I'm doing that just to keep the, the drill bit lubricated. Basically what we're doing here is we're drilling five holes, uh, one in the center and then four around the outside to mount the pier top plate down to the pier. Make sure you clamp everything down and it's a pretty easy, straightforward process. All right, here we can see me bending the stainless steel rod that will be sunk into the concrete. There are four of these, and the reason we bend it is so that the concrete has something to grab onto. The bent end is sunk into the concrete, and the top end is bolted to. All right, so I wanna show you guys the final pier top plate that I came up with. So again, this is using quarter inch hot rolled steel that I bought on eBay. The cost of the steel was about six bucks. Um, I also needed to buy a drill bit, also needed to buy um, some threaded rod, also needed to buy some various other little pieces of hardware. Uh, but all in, this whole pier top plate cost me about probably 40 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that, including some of the tools that it took to make it. Um, and you can see, I think it turned out pretty nice. Uh, nice black, I painted all the edges. I had to use a grinder a little bit to grind down one side just for some clearance on the mount. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty proud of this thing. Forest pier top plate, uh, my own little version. I do want to say if you're building a nice observatory, again, I left a link to Dan's pier top plates down in the description. He is the king of doing this. He does way, his are like an inch thick. They're beautiful. So that's definitely where I would go if you want something high end. Again, for the price of this observatory though, I wanted to keep it cheap, wanted to have something that would work, and so this is what I came up with. Now, just so you understand the way that this works is, there's basically four outer holes, and those go down, I'll show you at the end of the video, but those go down into the concrete pier, and they are actually bent rods that are sunk into the concrete. So when that concrete cures, it holds those four rods sticking straight out of the pier. This then sits down on top of those four rods, it uses bolts to or nuts to kind of tighten it down around there. That also gives us some leveling functionality so we can be sure this is exactly level in all directions, which is super sweet. And then, and let me grab this real quick, this little uh, stainless steel 3 8 by 16 bolt is going to slide right through this middle hole and bolt up into the bottom of my fornax. Depending on what mount you have, every mount uses a slightly different threading for the main mount at the bottom of it. Some mounts even have weird different adapters that work different ways. But in some way, you'll be able to bolt your mount down to the top of the pier top plate. So all this is doing is just giving you a way to convert concrete top to a top that can actually mount to the bottom of your mount. So this is what I came up with. Total cost, about 30 bucks. Drill bit, super simple stuff. Um, I will say have a little bit of experience drilling metal. Make sure you, that you use some cutting lubricant when you're going through it so that you don't burn out your drill bit. Like watch some YouTube videos on doing that if this is something that you want to do because you definitely don't want to be super uninformed on the process. But very straightforward. I was able to whip this up in about an hour, which is not bad at all. So what I want to do now is take a look at the second thing that you need to worry about when building a pier. So let's hop into the house and let's talk about that. All right, the next thing that we need to take a look at is how tall we need to make the pier. And this is one of those kind of probably the biggest concern with this whole construction project, at least at this point in time, because if we make our pier too tall, there's gonna be no way to open and close the roof without hitting the telescope, which is obviously a pretty big concern. So the first thing you need to do is decide how you wanna park your telescope when you are done with an imaging session. Let me give you guys an example of that. This right here is called the home position on a telescope. And let me rotate this around just so that you guys can see it a little bit more clearly here. Basically, the home position means that the telescope is pointing the exact same direction as the celestial pole. So south, southern, wow, can't talk. South celestial pole or north celestial pole. Basically, it's pointing at Polaris in the northern hemisphere or near the southern cross in the southern hemisphere. 
And this is traditionally called the home position for most scopes. It's where most, most mounts like to park themselves. And the thing is, if you want your telescope or your mount to always park in this home position, you're going to need a lower pier because your scope mount combo is very tall. And so if you want that roof to be able to open and close with this in this current configuration, you're going to need to have a lower pier so that this has some clearance. Now, this is really nice because if you do do it this way, if you want your scope to always park in the home position, you, this is actually the tallest that your telescope can ever be on the mount, which means your telescope could be in any position. And if inclement weather came or something like that, you could quickly close the roof and not have to worry about colliding with anything. The problem with this is because the pier is the lowest, needs to be the lowest in this configuration, it's going to block the most amount of sky. The walls of the observatory are going to block quite a bit of the sky from the scope being able to see them. So alternatively, another way you can do it is choose to park your telescope in a configuration more similar to this. This is how I do it in my observatory at home. What this does is this allows the pier to be taller because all of a sudden you need less clearance for the roof to close. The problem is you need to get the mount and the telescope to this position before you open and close the roof or it's going to collide with itself. So this is what's called setting a custom park position. Most go-to mounts have the ability to go in there and say always park in this position versus the traditional home position that most mounts are used to parking in. So you kind of want to decide, do you want to be able to have the freedom of mind to always be able to open and close the roof? Or do you want to have more available free sky to you by having a taller pier, but the scope needs to be put in this position in order to open and close the roof? For me personally, I went with this. I want as much sky visible as possible, um, simply because I already have quite a bit of sky visible. There's not a lot of buildings around me, so I want to maximize that sky that I have available to myself. From there, it's just a simple matter of measuring from the tallest point on this setup. For me, it's the edge of this camera right here, down to the bottom of where the mount mounts to the pier, and then just working your way backwards to figure out how, how tall that pier needs to be in order to achieve that correct height. Now, I'm gonna show you guys the pier in just a second with it uh, poured and built and everything like that. And you'll notice that there are, there are threaded rods where the pier top plate met, meets the concrete. And that gives you about four or five inches of adjustability. So if you don't quite get this perfect, that's fine. Um, I would err on the side of making your pier lower than higher. Because if you make your pier too tall, there's not really anything you can do other than destroy it and start over again. If you make your pier too short, you can add spacers, you can add different things like that to get the telescope up a little bit. So err on the side of a shorter pier. For me personally, this ended up being exactly a 34 inch pier from ground level to top of pier top plate, where this will then mount, assuming that the scope will always park in this position. Okay, so definitely some things to think about as you're doing this. Uh, what I want to do now, I actually have poured the pier. Um, I, I want to go take a look at that, look at the pouring. Obviously, the pouring of the pier is very similar to uh, the pouring of the, the foundation for the pier. Uh, we're simply using a Sono tube. I'll throw that up on the screen right now. We're bracing it with some wood to ensure that it doesn't fall over and that it stays level. And then it's just a matter of mixing more concrete, dumping it in the Sono tube, and then sinking those threaded rods and the pier top plate into that concrete at the top and allowing it to cure. Now you don't really want to take off this uh, Sono tube for quite a while. You want the concrete to get fully hard and fully cured before you do that. Um, I kind of half took mine off a little bit um, and, I, and then I decided no, I'm going to give it a little bit more time to cure. So let's go take a look at the finished product and then we'll call it a day on this video. All right, here is the final pier all poured out and beautiful. We can see the four threaded rods coming out of the top of the concrete. I'm letting this concrete cure for a little bit longer. It's been about 48 hours, but eventually we'll rip this Sono tube off so the cardboard's gone and we'll just have the beautiful concrete. Again, like I said, on top of this, let me get my head out of the shadow there. On top of this, we'll mount that pier top plate. It'll set on these bolts with a couple washers. We'll tighten down some bolts on top of it and it'll sit nicely right here. I aligned it so that the pier top plate is pointing north just to make it nice and clean and crispy and just the way that I want it. So process of pouring this pier, super straightforward. This is what the final version looks like.
And that's all there is to it for this video. So we have a poured pier. We're ready for construction part number five, I guess, in the next video. Next video, what we're gonna do, we're gonna lay down some gravel. We're gonna put down the foundation concrete blocks and we're gonna build the decking that is gonna be the floor of the future tiny observatory. So hope you guys liked this video. If you did hit that like button, if you didn't, you know what to do. If you wanna subscribe and follow along with this build process, hit that subscribe button down there or up there to stay up to date with future videos. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Have a fantastic day and clear skies.